without further ado, I want to introduce uh, Wendy. Uh, Wendy Bulio is a certified professional organizer and productivity specialist. Her company, Living Peace Professional Organizing, helps residential and business clients bring peaceful order to their everyday lives. With her non-judgmental approach and calming energy, combined with a healthy dose of reality and a sense of humor, <laughs> she works with clients to make decisions and take action to create desired change. She applies this approach to physical clutter, but also to intangible clutter, such as tasks, obligations, and goals, helping to maximize her clients' productivity and organization. <clears throat> Wendy knows firsthand how the struggle is real for women in business as, <clears throat> excuse me, as she juggles a number of family, business, volunteer, and community responsibilities. She lives in Arlington Heights with her husband, Mike, owner of the book rack, their seven-year-old son, and rescue dog, Rosie. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate everyone coming out on this icy morning and joining me. Um, I know it's a choice that you make, and that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today are the choices that you make and um, making sure you're getting the most out of all of those choices that you make in business. Um, I just wanted to share, and I've talked to a few people this morning who I think had similar mornings, um, just so that you don't think that I'm some kind of walking perfection uh, person. My husband had to travel unexpectedly this week to Florida because his dad is fine. Um, but I had to scramble a little bit and figure out early morning care for my seven-year-old. Last night I was parenting solo and trying to finish this presentation. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of procrastination. So up and down the stairs trying to settle him for bed and then, you know, do a couple notes on my slides. So, you know, the reality is we all struggle. And I totally get it. Um, both my husband and I are self-employed. Um, we both, there are often days where I'll be coming home we will sort of high five, and then he'll go off to an evening event that happens at least once a week in our home. Um, so it's a challenge, and then it's a challenge to find that time together as a family where one of us isn't trying to get something done in the evening. To stay present for our son, to stay present for each other is always a struggle, and I totally uh, feel that pain. So just wanted to say that, you know, um, when people heard I was giving this, they're like, you should probably attend that, um, <laughs> not just give it. So anyway, um, just wanted to you know, share that. And so thank you for the icy morning attendance. Um, it's, I really want to thank the chamber and the women's networking group for having me. Um, one of my goals for this year in my business is to really get more connected and get back into networking. Um, so this came at the perfect time, and I'm really grateful for everyone's attendance this morning. So I'm going to start by just talking a little bit about my company. Um, uh, I'm sorry, the slides are a little stretched out, but uh, we are Living Peace Professional Organizing. Um, I purchased Living Peace in 2015 from a friend and a colleague because I'd been an organizer on my own for about 10 years and was really reaching a point in my business where I couldn't do, take any more clients, I couldn't keep up with my own um, obligations and was you know, really needing to grow. Um, so it just came at a perfect time. I loved the team. I was friends with most of them already. Um, and so it was just a great opportunity to grow my business in a way that um, was very organic. So, um, so Living Peace has been in Arlington um, since 2015, but we've been in business since 2003. Um, we do a number of organizing services. I have a banner here. We do largely residential organizing. Most of our work is one-on-one -on -one with clients in their homes, helping to reduce clutter. Uh, but we also take a holistic approach to organizing. So we really want to understand the big picture of what's going on for our clients and how their space is affecting them on a physical, emotional, and spiritual level. Not that we're therapists, but oftentimes the clutter's there for a reason. And so we want to understand what that reason is and help create lasting change for our clients. We also do um, downsizing and estate organizing. We have a team, um, as you can see in the picture, so we're able to scale up for bigger projects that maybe have a shorter turnaround time. Um, and, um, and then photo organizing, and we also do business organizing as well. And I do a lot of productivity consulting for clients, which is why this topic is near and dear to my heart today. So in preparing for today, I went online and did one of those like, graphics where you put in a bunch of words and I think if I asked people in the room to do one of these they would be very similar looking. Um, I think as business owners we wear a lot of hats, as women we wear even more hats um, and so this probably isn't even complete. I just threw a bunch of words in there that I felt resonated for me 
uh, in no order of importance and shifting order of importance on a regular basis. And, you know, it's overwhelming. And um, someone shared an article with me recently about this concept of um, emotional labor, which is the sort of unpaid, intangible work that largely women do in the home, like remembering to send birthday cards and, you know, researching a landscaping service and making sure that it's the right one and, you know, picking things up and just sort of that... Um, intangible stuff and pressure that we put on ourselves uh, that is often shouldered by the woman in the household, not always, but often. And, you know, it really resonated for me. Certainly, I feel that on a, on a regular basis, and I see a lot of heads nodding in the room. I think we all can appreciate that that's, you know, a big part of our responsibility and our job that can really uh, bear down on us. So, the trick, I think, in business is to be as productive as you can and I'll define what I mean by productive, during your business time, so that you can be as present as possible in your non-business time. And sometimes those hours blur together, and it's very difficult to parse them out. Um, you know, so that's, that's the struggle. And there really isn't such a thing as balance. I really don't, you know, people say, oh, find the balance. There is no balance. Something's going to give. You know, one day you're going to be a better mom and a terrible business owner, and the next day vice versa, right? So it's really about making sure you're getting the right things done in that moment. That's what I mean by productivity. Getting the most important things and the right things done. Not getting more things done, because we can all take on more and just process through stuff that doesn't matter, but it's getting the right things done. So I think that's the key um, for, for us. So today, I'm gonna share some strategies. Um, I love questions, so if you have a thought or a question or a comment, pop your hand up. I'm going to save some time at the end also, but I wanted to just kind of pick a few areas. There are a lot of areas we could discuss, and I could spend all day on each one of these, but I'm going to give you hopefully a few takeaways in each of these areas that you can go and, um, you know, make part of your life today. So first one is decluttering your to-do list. <coughs> We're going to talk about things that don't belong on your to-do list. Second, I like to say embrace the no. Uh, this is one I struggle with every day. Uh, delight and delegation. How can we be delegating? What can we be de delegating? What's holding us back? And then planning and protecting downtime. So, and just, you know, a reminder, we can't create more time. There's not more time in the day, right? So people say, oh, what are your time management tips? Really, it's not time management. It's choice management. It's about making the right choices with the time that you have. Good one, Lee. This is Taylor, my marketing person, Hi. and she's gonna like take a bunch Sorry. of pictures and, <laughs> and start putting all my quotes on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is a commonly seen quote, right? If everything is a priority, then nothing is. So um, as we talk about our to-do lists and what's on our plate, uh, I often start with clients by talking about, well, what are your big goals? What are your big priorities? And people have too many. There's just too many on the list. You can't get them all done. So if everything's a priority, then nothing's a priority because you're working to you know, get a lot of things done. So it's really tough choices when you're making your priorities to figure out what are the things that rise to the top. So um, I want to talk here about decluttering your to-do list and some strategies around that. Um, first and foremost, have a to-do list. It doesn't matter what form it takes. People always ask me, oh, I have a paper list. Is that okay? Shouldn't I have an app? Which app do you recommend? It doesn't matter. Just have a list. As we age, we forget things. Um, and you will learn to lean on that list more and more. It can also be very um, uh, de-stressing to just use it as a capture tool to get everything down that you need to remember. So just have a list and use it. That's number one. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It can be a spiral-bound notebook, whatever works. Sometimes I think people get caught up in the, um, pro the sort of perfectionism around what's the best app that I can be using to manage my list. And then they do nothing. <coughs> and they have no list, and they're dropping the ball on things. So try to let go of that and just have the habit of having a list. And, um, you know, think about... Um, what is on the list and what you're tracking. There's, you know, you want to make sure that things on your to-do list are really actionable. So sometimes I see people 
write down like habits on their to-do list, like, oh, I gotta work out. Well, that's not really a task, it's more of a habit. And so I would encourage someone who's trying to make working out part of their routine to use their calendar and maybe schedule in that workout time. But that's not really a task that you're trying to accomplish. So sometimes those things end up on our to-do list and they get in the way of what are the, the actual to-do items, right? So if it's habits, think about other ways you can track your habits. Think about using your calendar for things, scheduling time for things that you want to accomplish. Um, and think about not having that as part of your to-do list. Um, also, like shopping lists or you know things you want to <coughs> pick up. Sometimes that makes sense if you have a, like a little errands section. That's fine, but I wouldn't start writing your entire grocery list in your to-do list because again, you're cluttering up your to-do list with a shopping list. There are plenty of ways you can manage that. Um, and uh, you know, the other thing I see that happens a lot is people will put a really big project on the list, like. Uh, hire an assistant. Well, hire an assistant actually has a lot of subtasks to it, right? So when you put something really big on the list like that, it becomes very difficult to figure out how to move it forward. And so I really think it's important to break that down into some really actionable steps. So the first step might be identify the tasks that the assistant's going to do or write the job description. You know, break it down into things that you can really accomplish in one moment instead of a big project, if that makes sense. Um, so you want your things to be actionable. The other thing is pick your priorities and make sure that you're working on them a little bit each day. I don't know if anyone's familiar with um, the notion of uh, what are your big rocks. You know, Stephen Covey um, and uh, in his work has sort of this concept of big rocks, which are your big priorities. And I think, I don't know if anyone else can relate, sometimes what happens to me is I'll have a to-do list for the day, and my big priorities for the day are on it, but I'm so like in the groove of accomplishing things and checking them off, and like, oh, look at me, I'm so productive today, I'm getting so many things done, and then I don't touch the big priority for the day. I never get to it, and so it sits for another day, and it sits for another day, and soon enough, months are going by, and I'm not accomplishing these big goals that I have for my business. So the question is, am I procrastinating? Is that thing actionable? Is there, did, I, did I create enough of a small bite for myself or did I leave it too big? Uh, what are the reasons that that's not happening? Are other people's priorities in the way of my priority? So you really wanna make sure you're dedicating a portion of your day to forwarding your big rocks. And make sure you don't have too many big rocks on your list at once. Make sense? Um, oh, uh, also, I really advise people to um, set aside half an hour of your day to calibrate your list. You know, it's not a lot of time. It sounds like a lot. Wow, half an hour. But whether it's in the morning or at the end of the day, just recalibrate. What did I accomplish? What didn't I accomplish? What's on my plate for tomorrow? What, should, what can come and go? And really, you know, take a look at what is on there. Um, oh, and then also giving yourself permission to take things off the list that don't belong. So this holiday season was great. Holiday seasons are crazy in the Bulio household. Mike is obviously a retail owner, right? So he is out of the house a lot over the Christmas break and, um, and I'm always busy too. And I just couldn't get Christmas cards together and I kept putting it off. I didn't have a photo. I couldn't figure out, you know, I just kept, this Christmas card, like albatross was on my back and I was starting to receive Christmas cards from other people and feeling bad about it. Like, oh, look at this. You know, they went and did a photo shoot and look how cute their family is. And I just didn't do it. And finally, around December 15th, I was like, you know what? I am not sending Christmas cards this year. And it felt amazing to give myself permission to take that off my list because it wasn't happening. And all my friends are still talking to me and it's okay. <laughs> I, you know, and I felt guilty because it's something I like to do but something had to give. And so that's what the tough choice was, was to say, I'm not sending Christmas cards this year. So give yourself permission to look at your list and say, what's on here that I really don't have to do? Like that I put on here because I felt like I should, or someone else asked me to do, and isn't really part of my big rocks priorities, you know, and just shouldn't be here. And give yourself permission to take it off the list. It's very um, freeing. 
Okay, so we're going to talk about the word no and how we need to, especially as women, <coughs> um, embrace saying no a little bit more directly. I hear a lot of people say no in a very open door way. You're saying no, but you're leaving room for yes. Um, because we're afraid, I think, of the conflict that we're going to create by saying no to someone, or we're afraid of rejection or of hurting someone's feelings. But the worst feeling, actually, is when you say yes, but you wanted to say no, and now you're feeling maybe a little angry, resentful, and frustrated because now you're, you've said yes to something that you wish you hadn't said yes to. Um, so <laughs> you really want to you know, define and protect your boundaries around the, the things that you're going to do and the things that you're going to allow in. Because when you say yes to something that you don't want to say yes to, you're letting something into your life or your business that really shouldn't be there. And so, you know, we often will should ourselves. Like, I should, I always say, don't should yourself. You know, I should be doing that. I should be, uh, you know, fill in the blank. And really, maybe you shouldn't be. And it's okay to not say, never say, I should. Um, so, some graceful ways to say no uh, just to a request. These would be great things to kind of. Um, I allow for X number of volunteer positions per year, and my dance card is full right now. That's one that I should be saying more often to myself. Um, I wouldn't want to sign up for that and not be able to give it my all. So thank you for thinking of me. That's a great way to say no. And it's clear. These are very, you know, we're not saying, oh, I don't know. Let me, you know that's very, that's opening. For yes, right? Um, I'm committed to focusing on some critical business goals at the moment, right? So that's a clear, can't do it, sorry. Um, I wish I could, but it's just not possible right now. I love that one because it's like you're not giving a real explanation. It's just it's not possible right now. Thank you for thinking of me. You can always, it doesn't mean you have to be rude about it, but just, you know, some um, polite and firm ways of saying no are important. And then other things you can be saying no to. Um, I love the idea of um, instituting a meeting-free day at the office, a day where no one, there's no meeting. You know, meetings can be a real time suck. So have a meeting-free day or decline a meeting if you feel like it can be accomplished over email or, you know, in other ways. It's okay to not have a meeting. And if you are going to have meetings, by the way, just a little sidebar, really think about what you want your outcome to be of the meeting. Like, what's your goal going into the meeting? What can people look at ahead of time before the meeting? You know, so if you have a document or something that everyone's going to be looking at, send it ahead of time so that people come prepared with their comments to save time. Um, and publish an agenda in advance and be really clear about the start and end time so that people are respecting your time and you're respecting other people's time. So anyway, um, instituting a meeting-free day at the office is a great thing to do. Um, reduce distractions. It's okay to not answer your phone. This one's really hard for me, but it's okay to not answer your phone. If someone really wants to reach you, they'll leave you a voicemail. Um, it's also okay to not open up your email. Um, you know, people have, there are some, right? There's advice out there that says, you know, don't open your email at the beginning of the day. Work on your big rocks, work on your big priorities first, and then open your email, because your email is likely full of other people's priorities. And so when you open up your email, now you're in this mode of solving other people's things or responding to other people. Just give it an hour and then do it, and you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. You know, or if you're more of a, if you're less of a morning person and you need a little warm-up time, pay attention to your your body rhythms. Turn it off an hour early at the end of the day and focus then. You know, whatever kind of works for your own work style. Um, it's okay to not be constantly checking your email. Um, turn off your social media. And text messaging, I know a lot of people are starting to like kind of just take a break from Facebook, which is really refreshing, actually, to not be on there. It's like, really? What is really here that's that important, right? So close it. Close it for the day. See what you get done. And there are some apps and things that I'm going to blank on the names of them. One's called Freedom, I think, that you can install on your computer that will um, prevent you from opening certain sites while you're trying to get work done. You can set a timer, you know, and it's actually a good strategy to kind of work for a little bit and then give yourself a, a Facebook break or whatever. You know, so you can set timers and say, okay, in 90 minutes I can go to Facebook for 10 minutes. And that can be a really great, refreshing thing to do. But it's okay to, like, not have the little red twos in the circle 
you know, <laughs> pop up and have you freak out about what you're missing. Um, and then just close down extra software programs. If you're trying to get something done on the computer, I'm a fan of just close out the distractions. So, any questions on saying no? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, delegating. Um, this is a tough one, I think, for small business owners because I think uh, we all think that we can do our job better than other people, which is why we're entrepreneurs and why we're in business for ourselves. Uh, and it's a tendency to say, oh, I can just do that, or I don't want to spend money on that, or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an important lesson because you can often get bogged down in tasks that you're not adding a lot of value to, right? So as business owners, we all have a particular skill or high value service that we're providing to clients. And so if you're bogged down in doing something a little more mundane, you're not preserving your energy and your best focus for the thing that you add the highest value for. So if I'm spending all my time <coughs> bookkeeping, for example, it's great, it feels good, I can get it done, it's kind of easy, mindless, whatever. Okay, I haven't saved any time or energy to work on the chamber presentation, so now I'm gonna be doing it <laughs> while I'm trying to get my son to bed, right? So that's not a great situation to be in. So maybe it's time for me to hire a bookkeeper, right? And this is a real life example, by the way, so if anyone knows a bookkeeper, <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, think about what might be getting in the way of you delegating something. Is it perfectionism? Is it guilt? Like, I should be doing that. I really should be able to clean my own house. I really should be able to walk my dog. I should be able to just do my own bookkeeping. Oh, I can just write my website copy. Of course you can. You can do all those things, but the reality is then you can't do what you are best at. So having the ability to delegate to someone can really free you up for growth. Um, so uh, in addition, you're giving other people a chance to contribute to, to your success and feel part of your team. So if you do have a team, if you do have coworkers, you know, having people feel like they are contributing is really a great way to develop their leadership skills and you know, um, give back because probably someone did that for you at one point. So in terms of uh, some success things about delegating, I think it's important to clearly define the task that you're asking someone to do and your expectations about what that looks like when it's complete. So if I ask Mike, to clean the bathroom. And I don't get real specific about what that looks like. I'm gonna end up cleaning the bathroom again. Another real life example. <laughs> Hi, love you. Um, so, you know, it's like you gotta break it down a little bit more specifically, right? And same thing with, um, you know, here's what I want my proposal to look like that I'm asking, or the letter of agreement that I'm asking you to write for my client. Here's what needs to be included, here's the format. You know, here's the time expectation that I have for it when I want it done so that that person who's doing the task for you is empowered to do it and knows what they're expected what they're expected to do what kind of progress reports do you want along the way how do you want to be notified that it's done those are all important things to do when you're delegating versus just because what's very frustrating is to say well I tried to do I tried to hire a house cleaner but she never, you know, makes my bed the right way. Well, have a conversation about it because that's just going to reinforce this habit of not delegating if you feel like it's not possible to delegate. Mm. Consider what you're doing incorrectly in the delegation process that you can improve. So I'm just curious uh, if everybody takes a minute because I would love to get some ideas. Some, we can make a long list of things that could be delegated. But I wonder if everyone could just jot down or think about one or two things that like, are on your list at the moment that you feel like someone else could, you could see a world in which someone else does this. And I'd love to just kind of share some of those ideas about what else someone else could do. <coughs> feel free to jump in with ideas. Anyone? Sarah. Um, I could have someone do more of my meeting scheduling. I'm sending a lot of doodle polls out, trying to figure out availability for time. And yep. um, it's, it's really, it really takes a lot of time. I could definitely have somebody else do that. Okay, so meeting scheduling, you know, is a great one to possibly delegate. I have a side question. With oh, this. please. Okay. This is, is not perhaps topic for today. Um, one of my challenges with this meeting scheduling is I work with some millennials, and um, I have a training and development background, so I love when I want to teach people how to tell time. I don't want to just tell them the time, right? <laughs> or you want to teach right. them how to fish, not give them the fish. 
So I have a particular person who always is pushing back on me and saying, mm -hmm. I asked her to send a mail merge yesterday, and she's like, well, you know, I, I don't have time for that today. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. So it's like working with this group where she said, I could teach you how to do it, and I really am challenged with basically saying, I, I understand, and I could learn how to do it. I get that, but I'm asking you to do it. I think it's a related question to, do I need to repeat for the camera? No, you can hear it? Okay. I think it's an interesting question around, um, around it, because it relates to delegating. What if you're delegating to someone who's just not, right? So I think it's a conversation. I think it's to say, listen, I, these are my needs and my expectations, and my expectations around turnaround time for these tasks that I'm giving you, right? And if, you, if she can't do it, you know, why can't she, and what else is in the way? Um, I don't know. Does anybody have other ideas for Sarah on that one? Do we have any millennials in the room? That's great. What's your job description? Just do office assistant. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it might be time for you. Yeah. Start at the beginning again, and then work forward. It's exactly. just such an interesting yeah. group. Is that a tough one? Yeah, it really is. Yes, yeah. yeah. so I've been to a couple meetings some. with girls in their early twenties, and they don't bring a notebook or anything, and they're working for me. Yeah, this this girl didn't last that long because I was annoyed. I ended up taking notes and like I was like, okay, I'll recap and send it to right? you. Right? No, you no, need to like, say. I'm the boss. I would like you to bring a notebook to these meetings yeah. and take notes yeah, and send me a recap. Exactly. That's and it's exactly not you're not being you you know you're setting the expectation. Yeah. Right. Other things people think they can delegate. Any other ideas? Well, I just have one comment. Um, I have some good ideas for scheduling apps mm. that work. Oh, that's on great. On the computer, low cost, you know, pay a subscription, but you program your calendar. People that's like Calendly years. kind of stuff, Calendly, right? Yeah, yeah. Done, yeah. Is yeah. It, you, would you share the names with them? One of those is Vcita, which I used to use for my business, V-C-I-T-A. Okay. Um, and the other one, I don't remember. Somebody else sent one to me recently. I can dig up that email and great. report it. I don't know which one she's using. But it works great. Yeah. yeah. Sure. That's great. Yeah, sometimes delegating can be to a tool, yeah. right? Yeah to a software that you invest in. Totally, it doesn't have to be a person. Yeah, thank you for that. <coughs> Who else has something they're gonna delegate? Grocery shopping. Grocery shopping. <laughs> um, I used Instacart the other day for the first time. I used to use Roach Brothers Delivery. Yeah. But they closed, which is mm -hmm. tragic. So I used Instacart the other day. The poor girl went to the wrong house, but oh. otherwise <laughs> the experience was great. I showed up with my groceries in a two, like a one hour window. Did they unload awesome. it all the way? No, they just throw the bags at you. <laughs> But that's okay. Yeah. I mean, if it's grocery shopping is something you don't enjoy or takes a lot of time, you can do it online. So I love what that. Is, what is Instacart? Is it Instacart, um, it was with, so Wegmans, <coughs> and I think Whole Foods also use Instacart. Got so it. you can just go in, do your shopping list, and most products are there. And, you know, you're trusting someone else to pick out your peppers, but you did a good job. Yes? I, um, I've inherited a dog, and... Um, I'm going to have to delegate dog walking. Yes. And thinking about, I heard there's an app called WAG, I think it is, and yes. it's sort of on demand dog walking. Yes. Um, so that may be something that um, I need to do. Because when the dog decides she needs a walk and I'm in the middle of some uh, critical thing with a client, yeah. she'll start barking <laughs> and get really crazy. Right. And, um, yeah, there's nothing like being on the phone with a client and your dog barks. Like, I'm clearly working yeah. out of my house. Sorry. But I don't, I don't you know. <laughs> I yeah. feel like that, that I should be doing that. It'd be good for me to go for a walk, and I do, but when I don't want to. Work. And you still can, but recognize, you're recognizing an issue, which is that it's interrupting your workflow, yeah. right? So that's not okay. That doesn't mean you can't walk the dog on the weekends, and you know, even the dog can have two walks in a day, one when you're available and one when the dog needs it, <coughs> totally. Um, I love doggy jogs for dog walking services, just a little. <laughs> doggy jogs, yep. Sally. I go to people's houses and work with them and, and get paid. And um, once I started going online with um, with my bookkeeping yeah. and my banking to be able to do it before I leave the driveway has been a big change. Are you depositing checks in the driveway kind of thing? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Online banking. Um, QuickBooks or other online apps are great. Yeah. You know, automate your bookkeeping. Game changer. Yes, yeah. absolutely. 
So yeah, so those are some great examples of things we could be delegating. And I'm sure when you go back and you look at your list, really think about, okay, maybe it's something you love to do, but that doesn't mean it's not um, a candidate for being delegated. Make sense? Sorry. <laughs> okay. for you to be in the photos. I know, okay. I'm going to back up now. Um, okay, protecting your downtime. This is huge because we're all tired. We're all exhausted. And I can tell you there are countless times when Tony wants something from me and I'm just out. I'm just tapped out. And that's really unfair. You know, he wants a present and active mom who wants to play another game of um, Tony and Friends, you know. Uh, and it's tough. So it's really important to try to be productive during your work hours, aka get the right things done, not get more things done, and then build in and really protect time to rest and recharge. So um, sleep, wildly important. Um, if I don't get, really if I don't get eight hours of sleep, it's not pretty. I can do seven. <laughs> Less than seven, you'll know it. Right, so sleep is really important to me. Some people can function on less sleep, but whatever your amount of sleep is that you need to feel great, protect it, make sure you're getting it, make sure you have a routine at the end of the day to get yourself to bed on time um, because there's nothing worse than just constantly being sleep deprived. Frequent breaks when you're working, I mentioned, I alluded this, to this earlier. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of different methods for productivity where you basically do intervals of work, break, work, break, work, break, and you know you can test out different ones and see there's Pomodoro, there's work for 90 minutes and take a 10 minute break. Whatever feels right to you, it can also really help you accomplish a big project because you feel like, okay, I'm just gonna work on this for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna do something else. So if you're procrastinating on something, set a timer, work for 30 minutes, and then give yourself a reward break. Building in breaks can really um, help with productivity. Um, Technology free time. I have almost no technology free time. It's awful. But the one thing I am protecting is I don't bring my phone to the dinner table. And um, that's really important because that's when we're sitting together. I'm hearing about my son's day. I'm hearing about my husband's day. We're, ta we're kind of doing some family planning. We're talking to each other. We're present with each other. And if the phone's at the dinner table, it's, you know, we're not, we're not fully present. And kids totally... They know when you're not fully present. Um, so figure out what can work for you for putting the phone aside. I know a lot of people will plug their phones in, like not in the bedroom, like downstairs. I think that's a really smart strategy that I might try. Um, so that it's not the first thing you're reaching for in the morning. You know, that's just not restorative. Um, admin days, I think, are important, especially for if you're a solopreneur or business owner. There's going to be, no matter how much delegating you do, there's going to be some admin stuff that you need to get done. Um, I tried to do this once a week. It just didn't work for me. I kept, I kept booking other things in. It's very difficult when a client is looking for my time and that's the only thing I have available. It's very difficult for me to say no to the revenue or say no to the client. So I reduced it. I have one, I have at least one admin day a month that I definitely don't book anything in. Ideally, it's more than one, but there's at least one. Um, or you know, admin times, you know. Try to theme your days. Theming your days can be really effective too. Like, Monday's my writing day. I'm gonna do all my, you know, blog posts and website copy on Monday, and Tuesday's my meetings, my networking day. I'm gonna go to networking meetings and line things up, and Wednesday is a, day, a work day with clients, and Thursday, you know, whatever it is that your business calls for you to do, theming your days can be really an effective way of streamlining your schedule and starting to batch tasks and putting and scheduling things in for times that you're going to be focused and doing the similar kind of work. Um, consider giving yourself the opportunity to do, take a annual planning retreat. Take a step back from your business and go away. Even if it's locally for a day, bring in some trusted colleagues or friends to help you brainstorm. What are my goals for my business? They really think that that's an important thing to do and to reflect on your business plan and to reflect on what it is that you're working on. Um, build in processing time when you come back from a vacation or a trip or a big meeting. Um, I like to just block my calendar out for an extra day when I come back from vacation. I might even leave my out of office thing on for an extra day to give myself time to process what I've just come back from, 
catch up on what's waiting for me um, so that I'm not sandwiching stuff back right back in as soon as I'm back. Um, and then take advantage of found time, you know, cancellation, or when you're waiting for an appointment. Think about having some less important and easier to do tasks that you can, you know, do at the coffee shop while you're waiting for your networking meeting to start. Little things that you can, you know, process during that found time. I like to keep a, a folder of reading material in the car so that if I'm early to a client, I'm sitting, I'm at least productive. I'm not, you know, sitting on my phone. I'm actually getting something that I want to do accomplished in that time. Um, so those are some, you know, downtime recommendations, but downtime is really important for your overall productivity. So that is uh, sort of the four areas I wanted to cover today. We have, um, a, I'm happy to take questions, and we also have a, a blog on our website that's put up by my team full of really great organizing advice. There's a newsletter sign up in the back so that you can receive that. Questions? Beth? I have a question. Um, <clears throat> do you have any particular tool, uh, methods for keeping your email not organized, but um, I find that, you know, I, I agree there are times you should shut your email down and not mm -hmm. look at it, you do productive work. But then when you do go back to your email, there are so many things that, and they, all, <coughs> none of them, you know, have anything to do with the other, and you could just spend so much time deciding, am I going to reply to this one now or reply later? Or to, I just find email to be the problem. Yeah, my biggest problem. I get that for you in particular <laughs> because you probably have you know oh, a ton of messages. Right, and, and it's like okay, if my mind, if my mind's on one subject, I can reply to some emails, but other ones I need to put a little thought into. Yeah. And then, all right, so I keep it highlighted, but then it goes so far down that I forget about it, and I don't know. It's just. I don't know. I, I don't expect you to have the answer, really. But I mean, I, I, think I think it's everybody a, has this It's problem. a copy. Do you use Google or do you have I a? I do use Google. Okay. Um, which has its good and bad points. Yes. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think you hinted at some of the strategies that I would suggest, which is you know flagging things for follow up, tagging things. Sometimes, if you wait long enough. Um, if you're on like a big email chain, yeah. it'll resolve itself. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Sarah, do you have something to add on email? Yeah, the strategy. Okay, great. Um, I will block off sections of my day and say, at this time, I'm going to work on this topic, and then I'll go through my email and only address the emails on that topic. Okay. So that yeah. I can get through my whole box on one subject matter, yeah. as opposed to switching subjects every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a great strategy. Mm -hmm. I had another just sort of observation. I had my own business where I had work and personal email, family, all of that, mm -hmm. and now I'm more of an employee where I have my separate email, basically personal, and the work block, and that makes a difference like I just don't respond to personal stuff right during the work day so maybe as a business owner you could think about two separate emails right mm -hmm. and kind of time blocking that with your family stuff and work stuff versus the combination yes. which gets hard yeah yeah I think I, I have um, four email addresses which is actually a little too much I went too far with that um, <laughs> But yes, I mean, I think that's a great strategy to have separate email for. But if you're, you know, even if, let's just say all the chamber email is that yeah. overwhelming, uh, right. you know, yeah, just block out time in your day to, you know, try to process as, as much on one theme as you can. I, um, I make a folder for each client, mm -hmm. and um, I don't put the email until into the client's folder until I've I've done, I've addressed it. Right. So that and then so that's really helpful. And then if somebody if the client calls, I, I click on their folder, any correspondence we've had is ready to, to address or whatever. Right. But if it's still in my work email inbox, box, it needs to still be addressed. That's like that inbox zero kind of approach where, you know, whatever's in your inbox requires action still and anything else gets moved out. I don't know if that helps, Beth, but there's a lot to that. I could do a talk on that. <laughs> Other questions? Sally. I guess just as what, what I do is um, anytime I go online for personal shopping or yeah. ordering or anything like that, I, I have a, like what I refer, kind of think of as a junk email. Yeah. And I just order everything on that and then yeah. all the 
spam and stuff just goes away, and I don't. See yep, it. I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So just have a separate email for shopping or transactions or that kind of just yeah. weeds out a lot of. Look at what you're getting from newsletter subscriptions. Do you really want to be reading them? Are you not reading them? Unsubscribe. It's okay. Yeah. Except don't unsubscribe to the chamber. But don't unsubscribe to the chamber emails. <laughs> right. Good. Other questions? Great. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you.